first patented curved light bar. Now, it just got smaller, slimmer, and smarter with the rigid RDS SR Series Pro. This compact single row light bar conforms to modern looks and projects more lighting to get you further. Boasting a compact design, gentle curve, and the same proven rigid quality, the RDS SR Series Pro is a new sleek and sophisticated way to own the night. Floral Parts is having an epic sale, hot summer sale to be exact. Massive sale, June 1st. Head into Four Wheel Parts or shop online at fourwheelparts.com and take advantage of these killer deals June 1st. Saturday, June 1st, hot summer sales, Four Wheel Parts. You don't want to miss this sale. All right, everybody, welcome back. We are back. It is uh, 4 p.m. A lot of you guys uh, might have just been watching. Uh, Cameron Steele just was live for us. Uh, unfortunately, it was him live himself, which means he was having an issue with the race car. So a uh, big, big bummer for, uh, for Cameron there. He had a really good race running. He was running in uh, the top four. He was right there on time all day. So a uh, big bummer to Cameron, but uh, hopefully they can at least get it fixed. He had a uh, uh, issue with a, it looked like a rock hit one of the, the water lines on the truck and took out the water. So the engine was overheating and then they had a little bit of a dry break uh, failure in the back that they had to fix. They were able to get that fixed and then they were working on the uh, on the water line right now and then they're going to fill it back up with water hopefully the engine's still okay and they were going to try to get going again but a uh, big bummer for him because uh, they had a really good race going he was running in the top there all day so uh, other than that let's go and take a look over at the the tracker so up front we have uh, Andy McMillan still started up front been up front all day so he is running first place still but right behind Andy we have Dan McMillan, but it's not Dan McMillan, remember now. On the trackers, if you weren't here for the last update, the Dan McMillan and the Luke McMillan trackers are reversed. So the 23 is actually the 83. So this is Luke McMillan in the 83 right behind uh, Andy right here. Then Dan McMillan back here is actually the 83. So where it shows the 83, it's the 23. So Dan McMillan has a problem. He's a stopped at the highway. He's been stopped here for a little while at the highway little crossing right here. So I don't know what Dan has going on, but that is Dan right there. So Dan McMillan is right there. This is Luke McMillan in second place. Luke McMillan started two minutes behind Andy McMillan. That means Luke just has to finish within two minutes of Andy and, and Luke will actually be ahead of Andy on time. So this race is really going to come down to the last uh, last minute or two here of the race to see if you know who finishes. Once Andy crosses the line, if he crosses it first, you got to count two minutes. And if you see Luke cross the line within two minutes, Luke's your winner. But then look who's in third. We have Bryce Menzies in third right here. Bryce started five minutes behind Andy. So once Andy crosses the finish line, we have to wait five minutes to see if Bryce crosses. So if Bryce crosses five minutes after Andy does, Bryce is going to be the winner. Then it goes back to Robbie Gordon and uh, Rob McCachron. Now Rob McCachron started even farther back. I'll have to recalculate that for the next update, and I will. Um, between Rob, between Robbie and Bryce, I don't, or between Robbie and Rob, I don't have the time splits on both of them right now. So this really is race is not going to be over until at least these guys back here cross the finish line. Cause once Andy does, we're going to have to get our timer going and time it all the way back to these guys crossing back here. So we will, uh, we'll see what, what happens here. So just remember when you guys are watching this now, the 23 is actually Luke McMillan in the 83. They have the trackers reversed. That's hundred percent confirmed. All right. So that's what's going on in the trophy truck race. Behind the 83, which is actually the 23, we have the 9, Abdali Lopez. He's moving up there all day. Mikey Lawrence, Tim Herps, Alan Impudia, Cameron, which we just saw, is having an issue, and he is stopped over on the beach there. Hopefully they can get it fixed pretty soon. Then we have uh, Billy Wilson and Corey Kieser, the 5L, 97, BJ Baldwin, 45, Gary Magnus, and uh, BJ still going, Chris Miller, so we got we got about 15 trophy trucks that are still having a pretty good day. That's gonna you know wait till the finish to see who finishes uh, in what position. The 14 was down early with some transmission issues. We heard uh, we heard maybe they were gonna change the transmission. It looks like they got going again. So the 14 is going again. They're just uh, back a little ways. All right. So then if we go look at the class ones. They are gonna be back here. So class ones, we have. <laughs> okay, we got a bit of a change here now. Okay, the 150 
we haven't seen them on the tracker all day. <clears throat> that's showing up as Morgan Langley. So that's, I don't know, that's kind of new there. The 150, they're showing in first place, actually. And then Brad Wilson and Justin Davis back here, and then Brian Wilson. So maybe the 150 was in first all day, and we just didn't see their tracker working until now. So that might be something new in Class 1 to keep an eye on there. Um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. So we got two Wilson cars in the top four along with Justin Davis, and then maybe Morgan Langley's winning up there. That might be correct. Um, in class one, Damon Jeffries, we did hear Damon Jeffries is out of the race. So bummer for, uh, for Damon Jeffries there. He is uh, out of the race. Uh, class 10 is going to be the, actually the spec trucks are going to be next back probably. So let's go look at, turn on the trophy truck specs here. All right, let's go find the first spec truck. Looks like it's right here. So the 299, they've been out front our last few updates. So they got a good little gap now back to the 204 and the 246. So that's Sarah Price and James Scully. They're going to be second and third. Then we have Chelsea Magnus back here, who's having a really good run today, being pretty consistent, and Chad Dorman here. Then the 294, Vincent Munoz, back to the 240 of Bobby Patton. So that's your top five or six or so in the spec truck class. Somebody was looking for the 257. Uh, let's see if we can find it for you real quick. I don't see. There it is. 257 is about to turn off to go up to Mike's there, Ryan. So you were looking for them. They're at mile 256 right now. All right. So that's your spec truck update. The uh, Let's see. What else are you guys are looking for? We just updated class one. Or did I do? Yeah, I just did class one. Just did those. Let's go do class 10 for you guys. So class 10 is right here. All right. The 1068 car has been out front pretty much most of the day. Cody Reed still out front, followed by Jeremy Davis and Dave Mason, it looks like. Then we have uh, the 1062 and the 1016. So that first uh, five or six cars is your lead 10 car pack there with the 1068 having a few mile lead on the rest of them. All right. Then we have, let's go look in the 1600 cars. Class 1600, where are they? There they are. All right, 1600 cars. You got a few of you guys asking, so we'll go back. It's the 1616 out front, followed by the 1609. Those are pretty much the only two that are up front, and then you got the other four are behind them. But a good little lead for the 1616 and the 1609. Those look like they are, uh, those are the first two 1600 cars there. All right, so if you guys are rooting for one of them, uh, you're probably pretty stoked right now. All right, what else are you guys looking for? Someone's asking about the 90. I haven't heard any more news on the 99 rollover uh, other than earlier today. Uh, also, did they add more time to the checkpoints? I have not heard that they did. I did check with Score Ops a little earlier, and when I looked earlier and asked them, they did not. Uh, they did not give more time yet. They Maybe they will. I don't know, but I have not heard of anything right now. So as of right now, I would go by the normal checkpoint closing times. Same with the finish line, which was uh, 20 hours originally. I haven't heard that that finish line closing time has been extended either. So uh, let's see. All right, let's go back and look at the, uh, in case you missed it earlier, the 1X was the first bike to finish. The 1X, and then I think the 4X was second. So that was the bikes. Uh, see, so, okay, somebody is just saying all checkpoints have been extended an hour. All right, there you go. So if that, I, I have not personally confirmed that, but according to JD uh, Durfee here, the checkpoints have been extended an hour. Someone else says one hour also. All right, so I'm going to go with it. Check one, added an hour. Okay, so there you go, guys. We learn something new every second here. Checkpoint one, yeah, reporting one hour extension on checkpoints. Okay, so I don't know. Do you guys know, did they add it? Did you guys hear if they added an hour to the overall finishing time too or just the checkpoints? Um, the finish line is the same weatherman just said, okay, there you go. When I'm talking to you guys here, I don't, I turn the weatherman feet off so we don't have too many things going on. So thank you guys for telling us that. So the, the finish line is still 20 hours. All of your other checkpoints have been extended one hour. So you get one extra hour to make it. And remember just cause you don't make one checkpoint, you're not out of the race. If you can make the finish line time in the overall time limit, you can still finish the race. So you just have to make the finish line in 20 hours because, you know, you might be a really fast car that can make, you might be two checkpoints down and you don't make the first closing time, but you can make the next one and the next one. So as long as you're able to make the 20 hour finishing time, you're not out of the race. So never give up just because you think you're going to miss maybe one or two checkpoint times if you think you can make the finishing time. All right. All right. Well, I think that's about it. Let's go look at the, at the top again real quick before we turn this one off. Let's just turn on the, the trophy trucks here. 
let's see, get these bikes out of the way. All right, let's go look again. All right, so you see, it's getting really close right here. Andy's hasn't updated for two minutes, though. Dan, and Dan, this is Luke. Once again, the trackers are mixed up. Uh, Luke is right on him. Let's see if we can get him to refresh here. Let's see, we'll, we'll give it a minute and see if they can do it. But yeah, the seven is, is looking pretty good right now. They're at mile 400, and these guys are at 407. It's going to be close. He's got to be within five minutes, so he's got to he's got to go. But remember, he's got the all-wheel drive, and he made up a lot of time coming over the mic section earlier. So it's going to be it's going to be close with the seven. Uh, Andy and and Luke both need to really they need to step on it. Not like they're not, but yeah, they need to get going to get ahead of the seven. And then Rob McCacker and Mr. Sneaky right here just coming along. Mr. Consistent hasn't been blazing fast or anything today. He's just been driving the way he always does, and he's right in it at the end again. Robbie Gordon, he's not driving his own truck. He's driving a geyser, and uh, he's having a good day. What do you know? So it looks like Dan is still stopped down here, and then uh, Epdali got around Dan also. Looks like Lawrence is about to pass Dan also. All right, so let's see. Did they update? Okay, they updated again. So there you go. Andy just updated. He's at 409.2. Dan hasn't updated for – Luke hasn't updated. They really wish – I wish they could change this thing here. Uh, Luke has not updated for two minutes. He was at 407. So <clears throat> you can see once he updates two minutes ago, he's probably going to be at 409 exactly where he is, 409.2. So they're, they're literally within, I would say, hundreds of feet of each other right now with Luke on Andy's bumper. So let's we'll see, let's see what happens along the coast here. I know both those guys have some pretty, uh, pretty good lines. They both, uh, I don't think Andy's going to get outsmarted by Luke on a line. I don't think Luke is going to get outsmarted by Andy on a line. Both those guys pre-run this section. They've done this beach, same exact section for, I don't know how many years. So they both know where they're going through here. Um, it's a really fun section. I've actually ridden through this section with Andy pre-running before. So I know he's got some good lines through here. I know Luke does too. So it should be good. Let's see what happens. Remember, once they get up here, they have to go back in that 30 miles. That was a total cluster this morning. They got to go do that again. So who knows what the course looks like now after all these cars have gone through it. So, I mean, that could anything could happen here at the finish. This, this race is literally not going to be over until they're across the finish line. Remember that first bottleneck was at mile two earlier today. So it could be two miles from the finish and something could happen here. We don't know. You're going to have to wait to the finish to see it. All right. So uh, I think that's about it for this hour. Thanks to KMC Wheels. Uh, four wheel parts and rigid industries for uh sponsoring this so we're able to hook you guys up with info um let's see maybe the score feed will go live again i know they had some drones on the beach so hopefully they can get us some more cool shots there and we'll be back here at five o'clock with the next update we'll see you guys uh at five o'clock